Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I want to tell you about the top 10 replacement apps for your stock iPhone app. So maybe you don't want to use the ones that come with it. These are some of the top 10 that I've found that you can use alternatively. The first one is a replacement for your browser, and that would be Firefox. This is a newer app called Firefox Focus. It's a free app. Most of these apps are free. And this one is all about privacy. So you can select your search engine. If I go in here, I have it set to DuckDuckGo. That's a private search engine. And you have a bunch of different things in here as far as block analytics trackers, block social trackers, all sorts of information. Now, there aren't multiple tabs, but if you want to search, maybe we want to search for Zolotech. We'll search for it. And it works just like any other browser, but when you're done, hit erase and everything's gone. It's just a quick way to browse privately for whatever you'd like to do. The next one is an alternative to your photos. Now here's the stock Apple Photos app. I actually use two of them, but let's talk about one, Prime Photos. Prime Photos is included with Amazon Prime, uh, or you can pay for additional storage, but most of it's included unless you have a ton of videos. And you'll see it's just like photos. You can search for it. You have family. You can share it with family up to, I think, five members, and it all goes into one bucket. And that part's really nice. Here's a video I had when I was on the water on my, on my sea do in the summer, and it just stores everything securely. It's backed up in case I lose it here, and it just goes there from my phone. Like I said, it's pretty inexpensive. The next app is brought to you by our sponsor for this video today, and that is Dashlane. Dashlane is a password generator that's secure. It uses Face ID to lock it. I was just in it, so it doesn't lock that quickly, but I can make it lock every single time I log out of it. We have some great options here. So you've got Face ID, you can use a pin code, auto lock timeout, lock on exit, and it even tells you which devices it's on. It lets you use it not just from an iPhone, but Android or any computer, Windows or Mac. It integrates directly into your browser. And let me show you an example of that. So here I've stored some different things. Uh, how about Facebook? Now this is a false Facebook ID, so I could show you this, but you'll see I created a super safe password. Now I could share this password if I wanted someone else to be able to log into it. As long as they have a Dashlane email address or group, I can share it with them. They won't be able to change the password unless I give them full rights. So maybe you have a shared website that you're maybe making some changes on. You need to share it with a colleague. You can do that. It's pretty simple and straightforward. If we want to see the password, we hit this button and it lets us see the password. If we want to log in, we hit the login button. It opens up in a browser here and you'll see it just fills in. Of course, it's not going to work because well, it's not a real username and password, but it tries to log me in and let me use it there. It integrates with Safari as well, directly into iOS, and it does a lot of other things too. So not only does it generate passwords, let me show you that. I use this all the time to generate passwords for, uh, let's just take Instagram, for example, and maybe we want to generate a password. We can generate a password that's random and make it as short or as long as we need. Select hit done. And now we've got a password that's remembered by Dashlane. We can get to it on our computer or here. We can also store bank account information. So you'll see here's one I, I put in just as an example. So you could see, but you've got your name, your routing number, and it wants my face ID again to unlock it. So it's very secure and you can put notes in here as well. The other thing it does is help you protect your information by alerting you to breaches. So for example, you'll be alerted as soon as a breach happens and a notification if you've reused the breach password anywhere else. So maybe one of these websites gets hacked and you're on the breach list, it will let you know and help you change it right away so you don't have an issue. So that's something that I haven't really seen before and I think is very unique and, and a great thing from Dashlane. Now, the next thing is we need an alternative to our Apple Maps app, and that would be Waze. And of course, you could use Google Maps. Now, Waze is a mapping app that's crowdsourced. So if you're not familiar with it, it tells you other information, not just how far it is to a place or help you search for a place, but it tells you if there's obstructions, hazards on the roads, accidents, how busy something is based on people's experience where they're at. It also will tell you where police are located. Also, you can change different things like voices on it. So that's fine. It thinks I'm not the passenger, but we can change different things like voices. Like I said, in the settings, you've got different things for voice directions here. And sometimes they have not only different languages, but different people such as 
Liam Neeson, or we have different different male and female voices. We also have a voice that you can record yourself. So if you want to be giving yourself directions, you can do that. It's very simple and straightforward and easily one of the best ones out there. Now, the next one is one I get asked about all the time, and that is my email app. A lot of you thought that Apple changed their mail app in some of the updates, but this is actually Edison Mail. It's a free app, and one of the reasons I like it so much is it's very similar to the stock app that comes with an iPhone. The difference is all of the features it gives you in the background. So you can quickly delete things. You hit edit and delete, and that's one feature I use a lot. Or you can swipe them off the display, trash or snooze. If I go into one of these, what you'll see here is... Not only is it an ad, but if it sees this over and over and it sees that I deleted a lot, it allows me to quickly unsubscribe from it. So it has all the normal features, reply and snooze and different features here, uh, convert to PDF, things like that. But if we want to actually delete it and stop getting it, say Old Navy, for example, I can hit unsubscribe and I just won't get those anymore and it'll just stop coming into my inbox. We also have some other options as well. So on the left, you'll see we have an assistant for subscriptions, travel, packages. It will sort these based on what it's looking at. Now, it doesn't share any of this information. I wanted to make very sure before I ever join something like this that it's not sharing this information unless you want it to. Now, if I go into the settings, you'll see I have an option for signatures. You can do signatures per email address or per whatever email you have in here, you have different quick actions. But one of my favorite things is the way you can manage privacy and under privacy, you can not only delete your stored data or opt out of data sharing, uh, they've got some things to help you secure your device. So if it sees that your email address is on some websites, it shouldn't be, it will notify you and help you delete those. And I've cleaned up quite a few of mine using this feature. It's very handy, very straightforward and easy to use. Now, the next thing is WhatsApp. I typically use messages because I'm in the United States. I use Macs and iPads and use iMessage between those. However, WhatsApp allows you to do the same and allows you to use pretty much the same features that iMessage has, only integrated directly uh, with people that don't necessarily have an iPhone. So you'll see here, it also says that messages to this chat and chat, chat and calls are now secured with end to end encryption. And that means that only myself and this individual can read this conversation. So I can make a video call, a phone call, chat with them, uh, just like I could with iMessage, but they don't have to be on an iPhone or they can be on an iPhone. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter where they are around the world. It works pretty seamlessly. So if you have a lot of people using messages uh, you through WhatsApp or on Android, this works really, really well. And it's free. Now, of course, we need an alternative for our music, and this one, while there are others to pick from, Spotify is probably the most well-known, and it does generally come with free trials. I already accepted that before. I don't know why that keeps popping up, but what you've got here is just all of the music you could ever want for the most part. Now, of course, on an iPhone, you could have Apple Music, but... A lot of people want the versatility of Spotify across all their different devices, and that's what this offers. So, of course, you have the normal browse features and search features and radio, things like that. Uh, but it's free to try, and then, of course, it's a monthly service fee if you want to use it. Now, the next thing is we need an alternative to note-taking apps, and that would be Notability for me. So, for example, I needed to record this video and remind myself sort of that I was going to do that, and I did that with this note. And I haven't been using Notability terribly long, but it's a really great app. Again, another subject for groceries, quick grocery list. And then you can also draw, of course. So you can draw whatever you'd want. Go here, tap, and maybe put some hair, whatever you'd like. And one of the fav my favorite features, if we create, an, create a new note, we can make a voice recording here. So now we're recording during the video, and this will record this memo directly to my notes here. So you'll see here, if I hit the little down arrow, I've got my audio. So I've got that. So it's a simple note-taking app that's free and really simple and nice to use. Now the next thing is a podcasting app. You can use Apple Podcasts, but I prefer Pocket Casts. And Pocket Casts is really great. 
it's straightforward and you can do things such as save the most recent episode. So I have it saving the most recent two episodes. It gets rid of the rest as you're not listening to it. You have all sorts of different features when you're playing. So if I play this one, if I play this one, you'll see it gives information. Let's go here and we can skip 45 seconds. We can skip back 10. We can sleep. We can play it faster at two times speed, things like that. And this also syncs across different devices. So if you've got Android or iPhone or iPad, you can sync it between those devices. And again, it's free. Now, lastly, we need a news alternative and that would be Heartfeed for me. So Heartfeed wherever it went here, Heartfeed is right here. And this is a way to see all of your feeds in one long continuous string. So you have this string of feeds, you can add them and then see all of your stories, go into them, read them. You've got a night or dark mode and it's really simple and straightforward. So that's it for the top 10 alternatives to iPhone. Let me know if you have any better ones in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.